after the war. This created an era called the post-war baby boom. So after the hardships of the war, there were a lot of babies being born and Australia's population was absolutely soaring. A bit like the 1920s, this was a really prosperous period following the war. This also created an influx of immigrants. So people from all over the world were attempting to come into Australia, both as refugees following the war and also just looking for new opportunities and a new, probably better lifestyle in Australia. However, um, the main issue at this time was called the White Australia policy. Now, this was obviously a very racist policy, which today would be considered just unacceptable. But at the time, what this aimed to do was to only allow white people to enter Australia. So the idea was that no people of any other background would be allowed in. The idea of the WASP, which stands for the White Anglo-Saxon Protestant, was considered to be the ideal Australian citizen and everyone else was frowned upon. Australia also at this time sent troops to the Korean War and this is to be considered an element of the Cold War, basically due to Australia and the rest of the world's terrible fear of communism and the idea that if Korea fell, the next country would fall, the next country would fall, the next country would fall, and then maybe Australia would be taken over by communists. So this was a real fear for Australia. At this time was also the time of the assimilation policy, basically where Aboriginal children were seized by the government to be brought up white. Now they were taken to boarding schools and missions against the will of their families to be trained as domestic servants and labourers, and basically to have their Aboriginality bred out of them. And this idea is to become known as the idea of the stolen generation. The 1960s brought the era of the Vietnam War. Now at the beginning, Australia was definitely very supportive of the Vietnam War, very eager to get in and help their American ally. However, there were certain things that led Australia to no longer want to be involved. So the concept of conscription, basically where men would be called up and forced to go to war against their will. And also the existence of TV. For the first time, Australians all had TV and they were all literally seeing pictures of the war in their own living room. And this shocking reality led them to really be against the war and led to a lot of protesting about why Australia was involved in this war, which no one really saw the point of. Returned troops, for example, were spat on in the street. And this has led to a syndrome called the Vietnam Vet Syndrome, where Vietnam vets or returned soldiers coming back from Vietnam really struggled to adapt and develop diseases such as post-traumatic stress disorder, which made their lives extremely difficult in the aftermath. The 1960s also brought Charles Perkins' Freedom Rides, which was a real positive development for the Aboriginal people. This basically meant that Aboriginals were riding in the white section of the bus as a way of peaceful protest. So this is really where Aboriginals started getting their ideas across that they wanted to be equal to the white people in Australia. Feminist protests, which is where women were arguing for the right to equality, were also extremely popular and prominent during this time. Australia is quite a conservative society, so it did take a long time to adjust to these new developments. However, slowly Australia became more and more welcoming of these changes. And if you look at society now, it's obvious that yes, these changes were successful. We then get to the period of the 1970s. Now this brought big change through the Prime Minister Gough Whitlam, who brought many social reforms. The idea that it's time, so basically that the Liberal leadership had been in for a long time, and the Labor government saw a lot of changes that needed to be made. So this means that conscription was ended, as well as a lot of new agencies and new developments. So Aboriginal affairs were focused on and also the environment was focused on. So moving in a new direction, which hadn't really previously been thought about. This also brought the introduction of universal healthcare. So I'm sure all of you today have used programs such as Medicare, this began with the Whitlam program of Medibank, which meant that Australians could access healthcare for free. So that was such a great thing which he introduced. However, debt and a lack of political support led Whitlam to be removed by the Governor-General. 
Basically, the Governor General is the Queen's representative in Australia. And what this led to was a lot of debate in Australia about why the Queen still has power over our Prime Minister. And this led to what we call Republican debate. The 1980s. Now, this is an era which brought computer technology. So all the things which we take for advantage today were just starting to appear at this time, even though everything was a little bit more clunky and not quite as stylish as the iPhone, the iPod or the MacBook, which you have today. So things like fiber optic cables, compact discs, so CD-ROMs, camcorders, cordless and mobile phones, faxes and fax machines, email, the internet, all of these things were really starting to become prominent. So imagine not having the internet today. The 1990s then moved further on and drew on these technological advances even more. So this was a time where we really addressed the big issues such as Aboriginal reconciliation and land rights. So finally providing opportunities for the Aboriginal people to finally get equality in their society. Also issues such as feminism were further brought on. Multiculturalism, where all cultures were considered to be equal and we were developing appreciation for things like the culture, the dress and the foods of different societies. Also Australia became more accepting of homosexuality and that really is something which grew in awareness during the 1990s. For example, Prime Minister Paul Keating was working towards having better relations with the Pacific. So it's these types of new ties, which although were considered quite experimental and shocking, really led to the development of the Australia we all live in today. So, moving on to the era of the 2000s. This was a big area of change and a big area of development. We'd finally reached the new millennium, or i.e. the transition between the 1000s and the 2000s. So the big way in which these were introduced to Australia was the Sydney Olympics in the year 2000. Now the Sydney Olympics were a big privilege for Australia to hold and was definitely something which stimulated a lot of national pride for us. However, the 2002 Bali bombings, which affected Australia, really led Australia to become afraid of the idea of terrorism. And terrorism is definitely something which permeated this 2000s era. Um, this was also a time which really focused on the plight of the refugees. So refugees were refused entry into Australia and were kept instead in mandatory detention against international law. So we get to this period where we think Australia is modern, developed and accepting, but we see these dark areas which we really think are quite unfortunate and sad. Also at this time, we joined America in the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. So this was really a step to in the fight against terrorism, which Australia and America and also countries like Britain identified as really important. 